In this video, we're going to go through an AFN example step by step. First, let's look at the formula and the given data and consider what we're trying to find. Additional funds needed. If a firm wants to grow sales, then additional assets will be needed to support those additional sales. How much and how much can we generate internally? The given data shown is all that's needed to find a basic estimate of AFN for a specific increase in sales given certain basic assumptions. We assume that all ratios remain constant, only sales changes. We're given total current sales and a forecasted percentage increase in sales. In addition, we need total assets and some current liabilities. We only need accounts payable and accrued liabilities, liabilities that increase spontaneously with an increase in sales. Notes payable is not a spontaneous liability. It's not tied to sales. It's frequently given, but you shouldn't use it. Now let's look at the formula. It has three components. The first component is the total amount of funds needed to support the expected growth in sales. The second component is the amount of funds generated spontaneously by the increase in sales. This reduces AFN. The third component is the funds generated from retained earnings. This also reduces AFN. Note the main variable in the first component, A asterisk divided by S sub zero. This is called the capital intensity ratio. This tells us what investment is needed to support $1 in new sales. The higher the capital intensity ratio, the more AFN needed. While we're looking at the formula, consider how each variable affects the outcome. More sales, more AFN needed. More accounts payable or accruals, less AFN. Higher profit margin, less AFN. Higher retention ratio, meaning less dividend payout, less AFN. One part of calculating AFN that seems to create some confusion is which variables are dollars and which are percentages. All variables in the first two components are dollars. The change in sales is typically given as a percentage, but in the formula, it's used as dollars. Once computed, A asterisk divided by S sub zero and L asterisk divided by S sub zero are ratios. M and RR are percentages. Now let's use the data given and calculate the variables needed for the AFN formula. First, convert the change in sales from a percentage to dollars. Also, L asterisk does not include notes payable. It's accounts payable and accruals only. With this, we have all the data we need to plug in the equation. On this screen, we've calculated each component of the AFN equation and put them together. The total amount of funds needed, the amount of funds generated spontaneously, the funds generated from retained earnings. The result is $510,000 of AFN needed to support a 20% increase in sales. We've gone through this step by step, which I hope will give you something to review so you feel comfortable computing AFN. 